hugely emotional last couple of weeks for Sam and Stu Cox. Will it be a race win? Will it be a championship? Will it be? Could it be both? Well, they do need the seven points. The is. Here comes Ollie Jarvis late on the brakes. Now Lim's not going to take this lying down. He's off the road. They're both off the road coming out of turn five. And the better run from Alex Lim, but he was outside the track limits as he did it. Jarvis across the nose of Alex Lim again to take the race lead. And as long as he can get the car stopped into turn eight, which United... Full course yellow, that will be for the recovery of Debris, I'm sure. Side by side here, Edex Sport, Lawrence Herr makes the pass. Muscles his way through on the Duquesne car. That's for second position overall. Just three seconds back from the overall race leader. And he's going to make that before we get into full course yellow. Leaving to warm the tyres. More close contention here. This is 24 and 3. A move made there by the 24 car Nielsen Racing, Matthias Besch. Tatiana, that's not Tatiana Calderon, my apologies. That's Nat Berton, side by side. Two, how can we put this, driven. Oh, almost a touch there, side by side. Matthias Pesch trying to, <laughs> to intimidate Nat Berton out of that corner. That wasn't going to work. Now tries to go up the inside. This could get very, very tasty indeed. Side by side, coming down to a rouge. Deep breath, everybody. Who's going to make it through here? They both are, but wow. in fact, the 24 is able to slot by Matthias Besch versus Nat Bout. Team Turkey. Martin Rump now has a brilliant view of this battle. It so it's, just. it's for the podium and third, fourth, and fifth right together oh. as Anlauer now charging his way down the inside on the brakes. And I think Rump might look into this as well because Lancaster can't pull back across the nose of the second Porsche. Oh, can he? No, he can. He slots between the two Proton cars. Relentless pressure, you have to think, for the final 15 minutes. Delatraz thinking about a move around the outside at Repsol corner there. They're going to be two abreast coming out of turn it's number four. Go either side, there wasn't quite room. I think he was hoping the Ferrari would hold the line in the middle of the corner. No room there, but he's going to have a crack soon enough, isn't he? Neil Gianni tries to position the car to make it difficult through the next turn. Louis Delatraz goes to the outside, the inside, takes a position, brilliantly done. Holds the line, holds the curb, and he goes through back into the lead at the four hours of Barcelona. A real flashpoint is the exit of turn 14. This was the overtake for Louis Delatraz. It looked actually like he was going to just follow Neil Jarni through, and at the last possible moment, very similar to Charlie Eastwood's manoeuvre in the same car. Stay out of the way of this incident. I would say that Jarni was slightly compromised into turn five because he was having to avoid the Ferrari and the snap on the exit. And I mean, the way that this car's been. going to be two cars together, and that is the 47 up the inside, taking that position at that point. But there's a better run out of that corner from Paul Lafargue. Is he going to get it back? We've seen this time and again this weekend. Can he tough it up the inside here? Need to be sensible. Lomko make... deliberately going wide all Did the way through turn three, and it gives him the inside line now for turn four. But he's coming to the hands of Neil Jarney. He's closing in quickly. Two abreast for the race lead, James Allen to the inside and will get it into the final corner. And Louis Delatraz now trying to bury the throttle to get up alongside the Australian. Where's Jarni? He's a bit further back. The United Auto Sports car is not on the lead lap. That's a Pro-Am car. Absolutely door handle to door handle as they head into the first corner at Verary. And James Allen will have the advantage, although Delatraz will take some shaking off. And he has the inside line, but no longer as Jarni jinx to the Inside so of people the know how it will race in a multi-class field and uh, yeah I, you've got to be in and around a good result with about half an hour to go to make sure you know you get good points so there's no point doing something stupid and throwing the car off in the, the screen open. about uh, a minute or so ago was in front but yeah Jolic down the inside at turn 15 a forceful maneuver making sure that Giorgio I can't believe Tony would make that mistake no well, as I say, the mindset for a Michelin Le Mans Cup race should be that you still fuel. As round the outside now will go the number 81 car. Who's at the oh. wheel of that? It's Juan Pablo Montoya, who pulls off a cracking overtake on Andy Merrick, who really couldn't do much about so that. It was 2.2, 2.2, 2.2. The gaps between the top four cars. That's altered slightly now because of Paul Chatan's very good middle sector which side of the road will Louis Delatraz go next he's More got position. the 99 car ahead of him four position in Pro-Am 
and that is uh, Bent Viscal being overtaken by the Swiss driver. Just or about. Well, Viscal on the inside line. And Delatraz gives him racing room, in fairness, as long as he now has the right-hand side of the track for Turn 7, he can now take that position.